Howdy y'all. How's everybody doing? I hope that you're doing well. Um, some of you guys may be aware already and some of you may not be aware, but this week my girlfriend and I are actually moving from our house into a new house. And so that being said, unfortunately I didn't have time to go out and do any camping because we're just so caught up with like packing and cleaning and all the fun moving stuff. But I didn't want to completely just leave you guys hanging. So I thought that this would be a good opportunity to do a little bit of a Q and A type video. Now I've never done a Q and A in the past. So this is totally new and exciting. Anyways, yeah, Q and A. Let's see what questions you guys got for me. As you can see, the beverage that I will be drinking is nothing fancy, nothing exciting, just a sparkling water. I would drink a beer, but it's only 11 a.m. and I don't want to—I don't want to crack a, a beer this early. All right, well, let's just jump right in. Since I first posted about the Q&A on YouTube, I guess I'll just go over there and uh, start answering some of those questions. Now, if you're wondering why I'm moving when it seems like we just moved, we did just move, and before that, we just moved. We've been moving like every single year. Um, and the reason is this time our landlords of our current house are getting divorced. And so one of them has to move into this house and it's just kind of a whole mess. So unfortunately when you're renting, especially a house, a single family house, it's a pretty volatile market. Um, and it's just, you're kind of at the mercy of whatever circumstances the landlord happens to be under themselves, you know? So, all right, here we go. Let's just go down, I guess, to the bottom. So the first one, question, will you get your truck bulletproofed? When will you go to the East Coast? Well, my truck is a 7.3 Power Stroke. Um, it's not the infamous 6.0. The 6.0 is the Power Stroke engine that's well known for a lot of issues. And those are the engines that get bulletproofed, not the 7.3. So I don't have any plans on bulletproofing the 7.3. I don't know if what that would even entail. And as far as going back to the East Coast, uh, I went last year and I don't think that I did the due diligence that I should have with that trip. I think it kind of just like fell apart and we could talk more about that later because I think I saw another question about that. Um, but I don't know, maybe, maybe again this year, if I have time, who knows? So many trips to do, not enough time, not enough money. Okay, what is your nationality? So I'm actually half Thai. My mother is Thai, she's from Thailand. Uh, and my father is Caucasian, um, primarily Welsh and German. Primarily Welsh, a little bit of German, and then, you know, some other things as well. But on my dad's side, um, the family has been in America for many, many generations. So Caucasian and Thai. Uh, why doesn't your significant other ever go on adventures with you? Well, she just did go on an adventure with me, but you're right, it has been a long time before that. Um, and the main reason that she doesn't is just because she works a full-time job. And I know we could do like weekend trips and stuff, but it always seems like when the weekend rolls around, we have so many like chores and things to do around town. So we just haven't gotten a chance to go out on as many adventures, unfortunately. When she used to work in a restaurant, a much more flexible schedule, we were going on trips all the time. You guys could kind of refer back a couple years to some of those videos. Those are really good, fun times, and I hope that we do get back to the point where she's getting to join on a lot more adventures as well. Uh, why only one vid a week? Well, one video a week because the videos, believe it or not, take a long time to put together. You gotta go out and film and then the editing process takes a while and then all of the planning and if you're trying to work around other stuff. This past year, I've just felt like I've had so much going on that has kept me from fully focusing on pumping out videos, unfortunately. It just seemed like that had so, so many things going on in my life outside of YouTube. So once a week just seems like the best cadence for me that's sustainable and i know that a lot of other youtubers kind of do the same where is someone somewhere you want to travel to that you haven't been to yet that's easy japan iceland and norway these are three countries that i've always wanted to go to for literally the longest time iceland has been at the top of my travel bucket list and uh, hopefully we could get over there maybe this year maybe not we'll see 
Would you ever do a camping event with fans? Possibly. I think I, this, I saw this question a few different times um, asking about like camp meetups and that type of thing. I guess I would. I wouldn't be opposed to it, but also I'm not a good planner. So I wouldn't exactly want the pressure of organizing an event where like people come and rely on me to organize everything. I feel like I don't have total confidence in myself in that way. But I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Maybe, maybe in the future, we'll see. If money was no problem, where in the world would you like to travel in the camper with Tess? Wow, that's a good question. I guess if, I, if money was no problem and I could ship the camper anywhere, I would probably have the camper shipped to, man, I wanna say either New Zealand or, I mean, I never really had too much interest to go to Europe, but if I had the camper in Europe and money wasn't an issue, that would be quite tempting because Europe has an eons old history compared to us in the US. So just going to places and visiting areas that are just thousands and thousands and thousands of years old and have such a rich history, that is, that's something that sounds extremely appealing. So either somewhere, you know, I guess to the European continent or uh, New Zealand, because New Zealand just seems to have everything, you know. How do you plan to retire as a YouTuber? Retirement, yeah, that seems like a very far off distant thing at this point. I know obviously the earlier you start planning for it, the better off you're gonna be. But YouTube, you know, there's some crossover with other questions about YouTube here, but YouTube is probably not what I'm gonna be doing till I quote retire. YouTube is awesome for now, and I think that it's gonna be a good stepping stone into other future endeavors that I might choose to embark on. So YouTube probably won't in and of itself allow me to retire, but you never know. Do you plan to travel to Alaska? Yes. Um, wanna collab with anyone? I mean, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I think YouTube collaboration in, in this genre specifically just means meeting up with other people and camping, which I'm totally here for. Uh, it just seems like I never really, I'm never really in areas where there are other YouTubers, at least to my knowledge. So I'm not opposed to it. Ever had Japanese style pancakes? Um, if by Japanese style pancakes, you mean like scallion pancakes, then yes, and they're freaking delicious. What was your job before doing YouTube and do you feel it was the best move for you after a few years? My job before YouTube was, I actually worked in restaurants. I was a waiter at a restaurant, which on a side note, there's a lot of money to be made in restaurants. If you're pursuing other endeavors and you need a side hustle, I would highly recommend looking into becoming a waiter or a bartender or even like a bus or something. You make really good money with like minimal hours worked. But yeah, so I worked in I worked in restaurants. I was pursuing commercial filmmaking and photography actually at the time. So my supplemental income was my restaurant job. And at the same time I was pursuing commercial work and then I started making YouTube videos for fun and the YouTube just took off. And then it said after, do you feel it was the best move for you after a few years? I mean, it's hard to say. It's hard to say if it was the best move. I do know that I have had a great time. I've been able to go on so many amazing adventures and really just live a life of freedom, like pretty much total freedom, which is awesome. I know a lot of people, a lot of people might have something negative to say about too much freedom, but at the end of the day, I mean, would you rather be, you know, shackled up in a cubicle somewhere? Or would you rather be out traveling, maybe making a little less money, maybe having a little bit less security in exchange for complete and total freedom? I think that the decision I made to pursue YouTube, I don't regret it at all. And I don't plan on, you know, deviating from this path anytime soon. Wow, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get through all of these. There's a lot of questions actually, and I haven't even gone to Instagram yet. Uh, what's the weirdest, strangest, scariest, or creepiest thing you've ever seen or experienced while camping? This is another reoccurring question, so I will do a little bit of a deep dive. First of all, probably the absolutely just most disturbing thing that I've ever encountered while camping was, I was on one of my first big road trips, big camping road trips ever, and at the time, I lived in Southern California and we were driving up all along through California, Oregon, and Washington. 
and uh, we are in Southern Oregon and we are using some app called freecampsites.net to find, you know, free camp spots. So we, in the middle of Southern Oregon, we were out in the middle of the mountains, had, you know, this is all totally new to us. We're from Southern California. So the forest is just like that much crazier, you know? And we pull up to a campground and we notice over off to the side, there are these really sketchy looking abandoned type trailers. And uh, we pulled up and we, we see these two people kind of look over as we pull up and we get out we're like gonna start setting up or whatever. And we, we look over and we see them and we kind of like, hey, we wave to them. And these two people look like hills have eyes, like straight bush, crackhead, really scary dudes. And they had freaking shovels. And after we waved to them, they literally just looked at us and they started charging towards us holding the shovels. And me and my friends, we just hopped in the car immediately and we're like, get out of here get out of here it was freaking crazy it was extremely disturbing like we we always refer to them to this day as the meth cannibals because we have no idea what their intention was but i'm sure it wasn't good so yeah humans i would say from my experience humans have always been the scariest encounters i've had a few other kind of strange incidents but never as frightening as that and then another time you know up in the mount hood area or up in Oregon and Washington in general, people really consider it Bigfoot territory. Um, and I'm not a total believer, but I'm also extremely open to the possibility. And I have had a couple different encounters that really made me question what I was listening to, what I heard, what creature would make that noise. Um, so yeah, when you're out there camping alone in the forest, deep in the woods, in thick forest, and you hear noises that sound like no animal you've ever heard of um it's pretty freaky okay that was kind of a long one let's 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 move on here do you have any dream trips you're planning or would like to plan i think that the biggest dream trips that i have planned are definitely making it up to alaska going through the yukon in canada and exploring that area of you know the continent and then I do also want to go down to Baja, California eventually. The biggest, I would say my biggest like bucket list dream trip that I haven't started planning and I have no idea when I'll do this is the Pan American Highway. And the Pan American Highway goes from Alaska all the way down to Argentina, I think, or somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where it ends, but it's a long, long drive huge trip so that would be a lot of planning oh this is another reoccurring question that i got quite a bit so always been curious do you have another job besides youtube i love your gear and various setups but i'm assuming the costs are to add up thanks uh no actually right now youtube is my full-time gig and believe it or not or not i know a lot of people probably don't understand the fact that you make good money on you like youtube you can make a lot of money you, you can make a lot of money on YouTube. The thing with YouTube is it's very up and down for a lot of people, you know? I've seen channels that have a million subscribers just start getting absolutely no views compared to what they once got. So it's pretty volatile, it is up and down, it's not as secure, but you could make a lot of money. And uh, the freedom that comes with it, to me, is what I enjoy the most. I'm not in it, like, I'm not like, oh, I'm trying to make all this money. I mean, I don't really buy myself much stuff. I don't buy new clothes ever. I don't buy fancy, you know, gadgets other than I, I I invest in good camera gear and in good outdoor gear because that is worth it but I don't buy myself things that I don't need um, and since I'm able to cut back on so many expenses in that way I think that although my income is all over the place it's up and down the full-time YouTube has worked for me for now and I also don't have a family with kids if that was you know if that was part of the equation then it would probably be a completely different story because youtube as a full-time job i'm going to tell you it's not the best or most secure when are you going to have new adventures with your old pal kang if you guys remember kang he's a good guy love that guy um he actually recently got a job up in northern california and that's like right on the border of southern oregon obviously so we're like four, five hours away from each other now. So we do have plans to meet up soon and do some camping and do some fishing. Kang, if you're watching this, let's make it happen, dude. 
Are you even a van lifer, bro? No, I'm actually not. I'm a truck camper. <laughs> On a serious note, what would it take for you to expand what you do to an international scale? This is actually something that I have wanted to do for a while now. For a couple years, I've wanted to expand and take this overseas, you know, do, camp do camping trips in other countries. Um, I think that would be absolutely awesome. And I hope to do it very soon though. Uh, it just, like I said earlier, there have been so many kind of circumstances going on that haven't allowed me to fully focus in and dive in on making things like that happen, but hopefully in the near future. What are your everyday carry items? Greetings from Germany. Everyday carry items. Phone, front pocket wallet. This is the Bellroy card sleeve. Um, I usually wear this watch which is a G-Shock, nothing fancy. And I uh, got my keys here. Oh, and I actually don't have my knife right now, but I usually carry a pocket knife. I have uh, either the James brand, the Carter, that's what it is. The James brand Carter knife and the uh, Benchmade Bug Out. Those are my two everyday carry knives. And then also a little chapstick there and, and a hat usually. So those are my everyday carry items. What would your top three spots in Oregon be? Three, top three spots. Oh, that's tough. I would have to say the Mackenzie River Corridor in the Willamette National Forest. Gorgeous. Um, the Mount Hood Wilderness, of course, that's just kind of like so close to me. So that's like my home, that's like my home forest here basically. And I guess the last place would have to be either the Deschutes National Forest, somewhere along the Deschutes River, or maybe Tillamook County along the coast. It's really tough. I mean, there's so many beautiful, awesome places in Oregon that I love visiting. So it's kind of hard to limit to that, to just three. What's your most favorite dish to cook? That is a really tough one. I guess it really just depends on the circumstance, you know? Do I want something easy? Do I want something more difficult? Do I want something quick? There's a lot of circumstances, but I would say overall, maybe absolute top favorite thing to cook. I'm gonna go with yakisoba noodles. Very simple, very easy, but absolutely delicious. Would you live in your camper full time? Absolutely, I would love to live in my camper full time one day. I actually, before we decided on getting a new place, the market right now has been so difficult for finding like a house rental that we were actually going to have Tessa, my girlfriend, just live in an apartment in the city because she actually has a job here in the city. And I was gonna live in the camper full time, you know, use the apartment kind of as a home base, have some of my things there and post up when I need to and spend time with her. But ultimately, I mean, we were all set to do this, but ultimately we decided that with uh, having like a three, four month old puppy at the same time, you're living on the road full time would just be pretty stressful. And then also this camper just isn't quite set up for full time living. Uh, so we decided to put that on the back burner, but one day it's definitely in the cards. That's for sure. What would your dream truck and camper combo be? Ooh, dream truck and camper. Man, that that's tough, but I'm gonna have to go with probably a, you know, F350 with the 6.7 Power Stroke, brand new truck. Um, and as far as the camper, you know, there's a company called um, Overland Adventure Trucks and they make these composite campers that have absolutely no aluminum extrusions or anything. So they are like R11 or they might even be higher. They're like R friggin' 15 um, insulation value. So I think I would have to go with something like that. Um, either that or there's a really cool company that makes pop-up campers, really nice pop-up campers called uh, Super Tramp Campers, I think they're called. They're based out of Colorado, but they make super awesome pop-ups. Um, and then there's also, there's also hiatus campers who are based, I think in either Oregon or Washington, and they do hard-sided pop-ups and those are sweet. 
those would also be really cool, but it's hard. It's hard to give a straight definitive answer to that because there's so many cool trucks and campers out there. Okay, who got you into the great outdoors and do you hunt since you fish? Um, I guess I started camping. Who got me into it? It was just kind of like a group activity among me and my friends, kind of like, I didn't grow up camping really. Um, the first time I went camping was with a friend's family when I was probably somewhere in elementary school. But I didn't start camping on my own until around the end of high school slash after we already graduated. And it started off as just me, you know, and a bunch of buddies going out to camp and it was a place to go spend the night and, you know, do dumb stuff that you do at that age. But yeah, I just, it started as that. And then it, from there, it just grew into road trips and camping while on road trips and all of that fun stuff. So to answer the question, do I hunt? No. I don't hunt currently, but I would I would not be opposed to going and giving it a shot. No pun intended. Fly fishing or regular spin fishing? Fly fishing, even though I suck terribly, fly fishing is definitely my ideal way to fish. What would you recommend to someone just getting into solo adventuring to be a little more comfortable being out by themselves? That's a really good question. And I would say, I don't really think there's any like specific gear that you could bring if that's what you're asking. Except of course, you know, bear spray would be a good thing to have to feel better. Or if you're comfortable carrying a gun or whatever, um, having some kind of self-defense uh, Self-protection would give you a lot of peace of mind. Bear spray would be the easiest, lowest barrier to entry way to feel protected. Um, you go to the local store, you get a, a can for like 50 bucks or whatever. And you just keep that with you if you wanna feel safer. But as far as like mentality, I, I think, I think having a fire plays a huge part. Having a campfire really provides a lot of comfort and security. Just the openness to be with your own thoughts, you know, not try to shut everything out and just kind of go into it and expect there to be some boring moments, but also expect there to be some really uh, restful and rejuvenating peaceful moments as well. Any upcoming modifications to truck or camper? Well, I would love to upgrade the shocks on this on this Ford. I would love to get all new heavy duty leaf springs. So basically just upgrade the suspension. Um, it doesn't exactly need it, but I know it will, it will handle the camper a lot better if I have new shocks, new leaf springs, because the ones I have are pr probably pretty old and clapped out. Um, and then a solar, solar setup in here, more battery, uh, DC to DC charger, just upgrading the electrical system. But other than that, nothing, nothing crazy. Oh, I mean, I would love to flatbed the truck and add storage boxes on the side. I mean, I think that is pretty, pretty crucial and it's definitely on the list in the future. Have you thought about doing a cookbook? No, honestly, I like to cook. I love to cook, but I'm definitely not an actual chef. Um, my mind is bad at like creating recipes myself. Sometimes I can do it. Sometimes I could throw stuff together, but a lot of the time I actually have to like pull up recipes and follow those. So no cookbook. I mean, it would be kind of fun to just do like a compilation of recipes that I have cooked in the camper or, you know, outside while camping and do a compilation with kind of like my own twist on the recipes because a lot of the time I'm, I'm not cooking exactly the recipe. I kind of like tweak it to a, to what I know my tastes are. So maybe one day, but I'm definitely not, it's not at the forefront of my attention. Sounds like you've gone through a few different truck camper setups, blah, blah, blah. Is there anything you wish you knew before buying some of your earlier campers that would have helped you avoid some of the issues you had like water damage in the Bigfoot? Absolutely. Um, first of all, yeah, I've had so many campers at this point. The biggest takeaway after all of the different iterations and setups for me was just to have a heavy duty truck. I know a lot of people are tempted to get a camper for their Tacoma. And I know there's going to be people who don't want to hear this, <laughs> but you're, there's the temptation. You have a Tacoma, you have a Tundra, you have these like kind of lighter duty trucks. You want to be able to have a camper, but if you're going to get a full hard sided camper, it's just so much better to get a truck that has a higher carrying capacity. At least from my experience, it just feels so much safer. You don't have to worry about doing a million different upgrades. 
um, and you have more space and it's just a lot more enjoyable and you get so used to driving it so quick so it's not like oh my gosh I have this giant truck and camper it's so much bigger and harder to drive than a Tacoma with a camper it's like they're about the same honestly especially because the Tacoma just doesn't really handle it as well so having a bigger truck with a high carrying capacity is a big takeaway buy once cry once spend the money on good upgrades spend the money on very safe parts and components so your tie downs all all that stuff is extremely important so it's not cheap but if you buy once cry once you don't have to worry about spending more money and you, more importantly you don't have to worry about some catastrophic event of your camper flying off or something like that you know uh, and as far as like water damage, if you're going to check out a camper, whether it's a truck camper, a van, whatever, do not be afraid to really pull things up and look in the corners because that's where the hidden damage is primarily going to be. You know, lift up the couch cushions, look behind things, pull out drawers, stick your head all the way in the cabinets and really inspect everywhere. All the, the hidden nooks and crannies especially in truck campers because all of the damage that you're gonna see is mostly hidden away um, and it's easy to overlook i know you go out you go you you're checking out a camper or whatever and sometimes you have this feeling of like oh i don't want to like look around too much but you know if you're going to be spending money on something you want to make sure that it's in good condition and do your due diligence really take a peek under the hood and look at everything uh, so that's I guess what I would say to that, man, there are a lot of questions here. I'm not going to be able to get through all of these. Okay. This is the last one I'll do from YouTube and then I'll go to Instagram for a second and then we'll get this wrapped up. Holy moly. I've already been filming for a long time. Okay. How did you and Tess meet? This is a good one. This has a lot of likes. So Tess and I meet, met at work. That's right. The one place that they tell you never to look for your significant other is at work. And we were working at a restaurant in Southern California together. And funny enough, we actually, I think we worked together for like at least a year, maybe two years before we started dating. And that's kind of just how it works at restaurants. That restaurant, there's actually a lot of, a lot of couples have come from that restaurant. Like we know a lot of people who have met at that restaurant, ended up getting married and you know, it's, it's kind of funny, um, but that's, I, th I feel like that might not be that rare when it comes to restaurants. Now we're just gonna move on to some Instagram questions. I feel like I didn't get as many Instagram questions, so this is gonna be easier. Do you ever get nervous about the dog getting attacked by animals while camping? I mean, not any more than I would be nervous about myself getting attacked. Like, yes, there's still probably a slightly higher chance of an animal attack since Kaya is a small puppy, but I'm not too worried about that specifically. Um, of course, that's just always a possibility when you're in the wilderness is getting attacked by an animal. So I think as long as you're prepared, and you know what to do in the event of an attack, then there's no reason to walk around in fear or anything like that. But I definitely, you know, make sure to keep her close and she's not going off leash and going far away and I keep a close eye on her. What are some off-roading areas in NorCal? Don't really know. I haven't spent too much time in NorCal. What made you stay, oh, this is a good one. What made you stay off socials besides YouTube for half a year? I mean, before, before I, I only ever really used Instagram and YouTube anyways, never on TikTok or anything like that. But the reason why I deleted my Instagram was just like, at first it started as like a social media detox, which is kind of just a widely accepted thing that people do to like detach from social media. Cause people know for the most part, social media kind of does have a pretty negative impact on a lot of people's lives if used the wrong way. So it started off as just like a little detox. And then I realized at the end of the month, I was like, I don't miss this at all. I feel like I have a lot more time during my day. I'm not just like brainlessly scrolling through Instagram. And at the end of the day, Instagram really doesn't, it's a good way to connect with people. But for me, it wasn't really adding much benefit to my life. So after I did the month, I was like, eh, well, I'm just not gonna download it. And then next thing you know, it had been six months and I was like, oh, wow, I forgot it's been this long since I deleted Instagram. So it started off as a detox, ended up being like, I just have a lot more time and I also don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. Have you ever thought about doing a meet and greet? 
Um, yeah, I mean, a meet and greet would be fun and all, but I haven't really thought about doing it to be honest, but maybe if there's enough interest, maybe we could do something like that. That would be cool. What are some must do things while visiting Oregon? Visiting in July and would appreciate all the recommendations. Oh, there's so many things. There's so many things. So it's gonna be hard to narrow it down, but I would say visit the Mackenzie River Corridor. If you guys are into hiking, you could do the Tamalich, uh, Tamalich Pools hike. That's a short one. Or you could do the whole Mackenzie River Trail, which is absolutely gorgeous. You go through all of the different waterfalls and hikes. If you're into backpacking, that one's more of a backpacking trail. Um, Crater Lake, if you can make it down to Southern Oregon, Crater Lake is definitely a sight to see. It's the only national park in Oregon, so that might be worth visiting. Um, if you're gonna be in the Portland area, I would highly recommend, if you're gonna be here in July, there are so many you pick berry farms. I think July would probably be raspberries maybe? Can't think of, can't remember off the top of my head, but if you just search up like you pick farms in Oregon, there's so many places that you could go and there's just idyllic, gorgeous farms out in the middle of the countryside, like 20 minutes outside of the city. And you go with a bucket and you pick all the berries you want and you eat them all or make pie or whatever. That's a really fun one. Definitely go to the coast, head to Tillamook, Cannon Beach. I know those are kind of touristy, but these are just things that are popping up on the top of my head. It, Cause you know, if you're, if you're just traveling here and doing a short visit, you're not gonna be able to really do deep dive experience stuff. Um, if you can make it up to Mount Hood, Trillium Lake is really cool to see. I'm getting too far into this. Have fun. <laughs> How long did it take you until you could do YouTube full time? When did you first start videography? What drew you to it? Where do you find all the old Toyotas? Oh, there's a lot of questions there. So I started doing YouTube for fun, I would say in like 20, man. I mean, I've been, before I started this channel, I had another channel. And so I've been doing YouTube for, I would say I probably first started in like 2016. And then I didn't start doing it full time until 2021. Um, so there was a long period in between where I was just making videos for fun. And then in 2021, I started doing YouTube full time. And uh, I started videography probably around when I started my first YouTube channel in like 2016. Uh, and where do you find all the old, old Toyotas? Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, you just gotta obsessively search and they're out there. This is an endeavor to get through all these questions. What does the future hold for you? Family settling down in a different state, will YouTube be for everything? Wow, okay, that's a big question there. Um, the future, like my, for myself, like for so many others, is very uh, up in the air, I would say, for me at this point. Family, of course, one day I would love to have family. Um, it's just kind of far removed at this point because there's still a lot of other things I feel I need to get done before that's a serious consideration. Settling down in a different state, yeah, maybe. You know, I don't, I don't think, probably not gonna be in Oregon forever as much as I love it here, as much as we love it here. Um, there are some downsides. My family also lives in California. I can't imagine moving back there at this point, but I don't know. I would love to be there with my parents and for my parents, you know, but we'll see. I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. Will you be, will YouTube be a forever thing? Probably not. Probably not. Probably going to end up trying to segue back to commercial filmmaking, photography, maybe documentary filmmaking. Not quite sure, but YouTube probably not going to be a forever thing. We'll see though. I'm having fun for now. Truck camper road trip bucket list. We already kind of talked about that earlier. Uh, how do you plan on retiring? We always, we talked about that. What do you love, hate about Portland the most? What's your favorite restaurant in PDX? Ooh, this is a good one because there's gonna be a lot of mixed opinions about Portland. Portland is a very polarizing place. People love to either, you know, tear it down and shit on it and hate it and say that it's the worst place ever and it's a crap hole and it's turning to shit and it's dangerous. Um, and a lot of that is honestly just media portrayal of Portland. Don't get me wrong, there is a lot of, there's a lot of really bad things that go on in the city here, but that's just true with all cities, right? So I guess my favorite thing, we'll start with my least favorite thing. My least favorite thing is the fact that there are, you know, there's a lot of homeless encampments. There's, 
the potential for car break-ins. I mean, in the time I've lived here for the last four years, my car has been broken into once. I don't really know anybody whose cars have been broken into either, but it happens. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Um, there are a lot of homeless encampments in a lot of places, but again, most, pretty much all big cities have homeless encampments. The difference is in Portland, it's just a smaller city, so it's a little bit more obvious. Uh, so yeah, you know, that seeing all that is really sad. Seeing seeing the pol some of the policies that have enabled people's lives to get to the point where they are. Um, it's all really disappointing and sad because there's so much potential here to be, I would think, one of the best cities in the country. Um, the potential is definitely here because you have just a beautiful actual like metropolitan area minus the dingy, rundown, homeless encampments. Like the city itself, the layout, the geographical layout is awesome. It's a really pretty city. All of the trees mixed in to the city centers and it's just like the perfect size city as well. It's not too big, but it's also like not too small. It still feels like a city. You have a gorgeous river that runs right through the city. It's, so it's just, it's very pretty. And then of course the proximity to so many different things. You have the River Gorge, the coast, Mount Hood, um, Washington is right up there. There's, we're just, there's a lot to do living in this area. And then of course the food scene is unreal. The food here is just so, so freaking good. There's so many good restaurants that you could go to. Okay, here's a good one from somebody who I actually went to uh, high school with a long time ago. And he says, what made you do what you do and does it ever get lonely? That's a good question. Honestly, we kind of went into how I got into YouTube in the first place. And the reason why I started solo traveling and camping so much is because it's just so much easier to make things happen. Like coordinating with groups. And I, I love camping with people. I absolutely love going on adventures with people. I'm not like a total just loner and I don't actively choose to do things solo because I much prefer it that way. I mean, in some ways I definitely do prefer solo travel in that experience because I am pretty introverted. But also it's just, it's just a lot easier to like go out and do a trip on my own schedule without having to coordinate with other people. And then the more you do it, uh, it just becomes a habit. And then, you know, you add filming into the mix and it's just so much easier to film when I'm just by myself. So it definitely, it definitely was more of a product of like, it just worked out that way. Um, and do I ever get lonely? Yeah, of course, I definitely get lonely. Um, there's moments where I'm out in amazing places and I just feel super, super kind of sad to not be able to share it with other people. And that's one of the big reasons why I got a dog. I know it sounds kind of funny, but having a dog with you to share those experiences is just so much more fulfilling than being completely alone and only seeing things for yourself. Uh, so yes, I do get lonely. Oh, that reminds me, there was, I think there was a question over on YouTube that um, got asked multiple times that I will go ahead and answer. And that was, someone asked why, why the East Coast trip got cut so short. And uh, that kind of connects to what I was just talking about. And a big part of it was loneliness on that trip. I think I had an unrealistic timeline. I was trying to get all the way to the East Coast for fall foliage, which just, I left too late to make that happen, to get there for peak fall foliage. And so I ended up just driving and driving and driving day after day of just like 10 hour days of driving. And I got all the way over there. All of the fall colors were already kind of gone. All of the campgrounds were closed for the season. All of the places to fill up water and dump my tanks were all closed. And it just became such a chore and such a hassle to do anything. And it just felt so hollow. And I didn't really have anything planned at that point. And it just, it, it was a very poor, it was a very poorly planned trip. And I definitely suffered the consequences of that poor planning. And then it just came to kind of a peak when I was out in this gorgeous spot on the coast in Maine, in Acadia National Park. And I was looking at this gorgeous view and it just hit me. I was like, what am I doing out here? I'm so alone and just, this feels so pointless. And it was an extremely low point. So 
I decided I was going to turn it around um, and I also did have stuff that I needed to be back for in town. So loneliness on the road gets real, but I'm glad to have a dog now and a camping companion. And I think that that's going to make a huge difference, especially when she's like fully trained up. Okay. Well, I've been filming for almost an hour now. And uh, I think I'm just gonna wrap it up here. This was fun though. This was fun. This was definitely different. If you guys want more of these types of videos, do feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, there was still a good amount of questions that we weren't able to get through. I'm not looking forward to packing this weekend or I'm not looking forward to moving. We're pretty much all packed. And uh, yeah, this was cool. Maybe in the future we'll do like a live version. I think that a live version would be kind of fun too. That's gonna do it. Thank you guys like always for watching. Next week, I'll be back out there on the road camping and there will be a normal camping video. Until then, thank you guys and I will see you in the next one. Peace.